Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Rugby BS, and yes, I have a new background yet again. Long story short, I've temporarily moved back with my dad, basically just because we got a piano, Exhibit A, and because of lockdown policies and health reasons, of course I couldn't come here to practice every day, so I just moved back for the foreseeable present slash immediate future. It's been quite an adjustment, but it's super cool. I'm an only child and I'm really close with my dad. So it's kind of been a nice change of pace. He's really happy to have me here and I'm very happy to be able to practice every day on a real piano. I love you, baby. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the books. So Springathon is over. I really, really loved participating. So thank you to Natalie and Emma for hosting. This was fabulous. I hope it happens every single year. In case you are not up to speed with Springathon, I will leave my TBR video and my tag down below together with the announcement videos. We also had bookstagram challenges, which I was very good at until all of this happened and a lot of other things also happened and I just kind of lost steam and I just couldn't keep up and returned for the last day. But I had a lot of fun. My reading was exactly like that too. I really enjoyed every single thing I read, which was super rare and I was so excited. After the somewhat lukewarm April month I had, link down below to my wrap up so you can understand what I'm talking about. Also, there are some books that are currently reading. I'm just going to talk about those when I'm done because I have nine books to tell you about. Most of them are pretty short, but yeah, I, I want to spend more time with these books. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video and let's move on. The only requirement challenge was to read one nonfiction nature writing book. And for that, I read The Best American Science and Nature Writing 2019 by Cy Montgomery. I really, really, really enjoyed this. I enjoyed both the introductions by Jamie Green, who's the series editor, and Simon Montgomery, who is this year's editor or last year's editor. I really enjoyed the selection. I think it was especially depressing in a way because depressing times, yeah. Uh, there is one by Ed Yong, the author of I Contain Multitudes, which is called When the Next Plague Hits and it's about the Ebola virus and how widely unprepared the world was to cope with it and how it doesn't look like that's going to change. It hit, it hit hard. There are a lot of pieces here that will enrage you, but there are also some whimsical pieces. I think that was really cool. I did a short review of my favorites on my blog, so I link that down below so you can check it out. But yeah, I really, really recommend it. If you don't know where to start with the series, I think this is a good one because it's very balanced and it's also very relevant to what's happening right now. Then there were five one word prompts that could be interpreted as words in the title, in the cover, or the topic of the book. And as I said in my TBR, I didn't pre select any books for these challenges. I sort of match them afterwards. For the bird prompt, I selected What is the Truth by Ted Hughes. This is a collection of children's poetry, which I didn't know, or I didn't remember really, because like in the back they talk about how it's a children's book. <laughs> it also doesn't really look like a, big, a children's book, like it has illustrations, but they are very bare bones. So apparently British children in the past century were much more serious. But in any case, I really enjoyed this. This is about God and his son talking about life and truth on earth. It's very allegorical. I feel like if you like Narnia, you might enjoy this. Of course, this is not as religious, even though God's in there. This was really relaxing. If you like animal poems, this I feel is a bit essential. And there is some deeper content sometimes, like, oh, that's a bit dark. I like that. I, I appreciate it. Again, not mind-blowing, but I really enjoyed it. What was mind-blowing is the book I matched to the water prompt, Upstream, by Mary Oliver. So Mary Oliver is a poet that I didn't really know before I took my poetry survey course in college last year and we read theory on poetry by her. And then when I went to Seattle this earlier this year, she was very big there and 
a lot of places had a lot of poems by her and that's where I became familiar with her poetry and then I just picked this up because I kept seeing it and it looked so great. This is a selection of essays from other works I think, so if you've read her extensively perhaps this is not for you, but if you haven't, like me, this is wonderful. It even includes some of her poetry, which I think is great because if you need sort of a Mary Oliver reader, this is what you want to pick up. All the essays were so interesting. She has a lot of essays just on life and nature. She has some more philosophical essays and she also has literary essays in relation to Whitman and Emerson and I just... Oh, she's so good. The writing is lyrical and beautiful and breathtaking, but at the same time, she is very precise in her points and she never wanders aimlessly. I really, really recommend it. And then for Animal, this is probably the farthest reach. I selected my reread of Elsewhere because it has animals on the cover. Um, I didn't finish my Animal read, sorry. In any case, Elsewhere by Rosita Boland was one of my favorite books of 2018, link down below as always. This is my second time reading it. She is a lifetime traveler and a journalist and she reflects here about that desire to go to other places, to always be on the move, this idea of the Elsewhere always calling you. I thought it was fascinating the second time around. There is one that I always kind of slog through which is the Pakistan one, because it's really long and it has like many tangents, but at the end, I still feel like that was worth it. She goes to all these interesting places. What I love the most is that she kept journals. So she wrote this book so much after the fact that the sense of perspective is so rich and how she ties together to grander ideas of being and literature and language and human connection. Ah, oh, that's amazing. And just like a very pragmatic thing is that you see how traveling has changed, especially communications and how you can plan, doesn't choose to plan, which is totally not how I do it. I'm a big list maker and planner, so it's just fascinating. And I love how she writes, very straightforward, but at the same time, she has these moments of insight and I really, really love it. Then for Plant, I selected A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr. This was darker than I expected, though if you read the introduction by the author, which is truly an introduction, it's not like a spoiler analysis driven intro, he wanted to write this much more bucolic tale and in the end it's kind of despairing. This is about a young man after World War I who goes to uncover a picture at a church in a very small rural village. At first I thought he went to look at a picture that was already famous, but that's not it. He is cleaning it up and discovering its secrets. So that adds, of course, a more tangible representation of his desire to have a purpose, to discover life, because he's very young, but he's been through war, which was course very traumatic and he really connects with it and he doesn't really want to move on by the end it's him reflecting back and that's made very clear and that sort of changes the tone of the whole book it's a really short book by the way and it also does feature like a spoilery classic introduction by Penelope Fitzgerald so you should read that afterwards but yeah I really really appreciated this because the main character is kind of lost a bit pretentious at first, but also so willing and eager to be swayed by these circumstances. I didn't really realize how powerful the reading experience was until I finished it. So that was really, really good. Then for travel, since I already used elsewhere, I'm going to talk about Footsteps, Literary Pilgrimage Around the World. This is the New York Times anthology. I love these things. By the way, I love the design and bold choice, the print, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually blue and it's not like a deep navy, it's like kind of a light navy. I really, really love this. Of course, I didn't love every single essay because they are by different authors and also not all of them were the same length. You know, I love my literary gossip slash history slash insight slash study. So I really loved this idea of connecting the sense of place with the author, especially because it's not necessarily where the author grew, it's where they 
spent a significant time of their lives or a significant period in their lives and more often than not that would come out in their writing as well. I liked that this was quite diverse even though the sections are United States, Europe and the rest of the oh no beyond they had an essay on chile and pablo neruda which i actually really really enjoyed it's interesting to see what foreigners think of neruda right now in chile his legacy is sort of always being re-evaluated but the essay itself was really good because it was a lot about traveling and collecting as well that's something i think depends on the essay whether it's more just about the author and the literature or actually the place and the writing once again these are mostly very short so yeah i would recommend this of course don't expect every single one to blow you away but i really enjoyed it and it was actually a delight i just really really appreciate it i'm telling you like these two weeks were great then three extra books the sailor who fell from grace with the sea by Yukio Mishima. This was translated from the Japanese by John Nathan and he did a really good job actually. I think it's the first time I read him in English. That was very interesting. The cover, by the way, this stunning cover is by Yuko Shimizu. She's one of my favorite illustrators of all time. I love everything she does. I posted this and she saw it and she reposted it because this is actually her favorite Mishima and it was just like such a nice moment of senpai noticed me. I don't know why I call her senpai. I can't draw for shit, but I really admire her. This is about only child Noboru and his mom who's been widowed for a long time, I think, widowed, yes, and she starts a relationship with a sailor. Noboru really admires him because he has this very noble and heroic idea of the navy, but then when the sailor settles down with his mom, he sort of feels so very disappointed. Noboru is this very introspective, kind of sadistic child who thinks he's smarter than everyone else, which honestly was one of the appeals for me. It's been a while since I read Mishima and I just can't figure out why because I love him so much. Um, this was really great. It's the shortest novel I've read by him, although I've read his short fiction too. And it was really powerful and really introspective. I don't think it's my favorite, but I, I just enjoyed it. If you like Mishima, I recommend this one. Though not to start, I feel like you should start with his short stories. Find out what you like from there. You can then go to the novels, for example, Companions of a Mask, that's enough about Mishima. I talk too much. This is going to be a longish video. So then I read A Whole Life by Robert C. Taylor and this was actually translated, I didn't know that, from the German, I think, let me check, by Charlotte Collins. This was so nice and quietly profound. It's hard to describe. It's, it's basically the life of a guy who has always lived in the mountains and how he falls in love and how he goes to war and how he has to sort of put his life back together after that. It reminds me a bit of Train Dreams by Dennis Johnson, if you've read that, but this is much more bucolic and much more optimistic. Not necessarily because it's happy, but it's trying to show that life goes on and as long as you take it one step at a time, things are going to be okay. I like the writing because of where my mind was at. It was kind of hard to get into it at first. It's not dry, I wouldn't say that, it's just a different pacing to what I was used to, but I still liked it. I would recommend it and if you can, pair it with Dennis Johnson's Train Dreams, see the industrial bleak side versus the more bucolic optimistic side. And finally, I read this lovely essay by Horatio Clare, Something of His Art, Walking to Lübeck with J.S. Bach. If you follow me on Goodreads or Bookstagram, or my personal Instagram. You might have noticed that I've gone crazy. Well, I am. You might have noticed that already. Classical music has overtaken my life and you'll see this probably in all my TBRs and wrap ups from here to eternity. Yeah, I was so happy that I had put this in my Springathon TBR. And so I did read this while listening to Bach and that was amazing because Horatio Clare is not only recreating this journey, he is also reflecting on Bach's life and what made him initially move to Lubeck. Near the end, we get some insights into how 
Claire got into Bach, which was basically he was very depressed, and he found that the cello suites really spoke to him. So that was fascinating. And I just loved how open Claire is to everything around him. It's a really personal approach. It's a really personal touch. But because I love Claire's writing, I really, really enjoyed this. By the way, this was recorded for BBC Radio. I don't think this is actually a literal transcription, though. I think he wrote this after or while he was recording the show, but the show records him talking while they walk. So it's a sort of a different experience. I might want to get my hands on the BBC radio show. So yeah, that was it. As you can see, not a single bad review. I really, really enjoyed Springathon in general. It was a great experience, both reading and just community wise. So yeah, I'm so happy. Tell me if you participated, what you read, and if you've read or are interested in reading any of these books, please do let me know. And yeah, see you next time.